Hi everyone, it's Christmas 2020. In today's video, the weather may be positively Baltic, but we're braving sub-zero temperatures in December to discover how you can keep yourself occupied for just one day in Tallinn, Estonia. This is the final part of my Baltics series. We've already spent a considerable amount of time in the Latvian capital Riga, visiting its beautiful old town, incredible central market, and even the former KGB headquarters. But this time we're focusing on Christmas. It may be 2020, but some countries are still putting on Christmas markets and getting in to the festive spirit. But we're also going old school explorer by visiting a crumbling remnant from the Soviet era. It's time to get in the festive mood. Welcome to Tallinn. Right, good morning everyone. It's early morning in Tallinn, Estonia. You can see my breath emanating from my mouth and it's minus seven Celsius, which means it must be time to film a video. And you might already notice as well, my top lip is completely frozen. So my speech is gonna be crazy in this video, but that's what you get for coming to Tallinn in December. And you can see behind me a wonderful Christmas tree. I'm in the old town. And I think after 2020, we all deserve a magical Christmas, right? So in this video, I'm gonna try my best, to try my utmost, to show you as much as I can of Tallinn if you're planning a trip here in December. <laughs> what am I doing? We're starting off in the quite beautiful old town. It's very similar to the one in Riga, but I feel like a slightly more Scandinavian feel, obviously, because of the location. We're quite close to Helsinki and the rest of Scandinavia. And I'm staying at that building over there, which is um, that one there. It's a 700 year old medieval building. So there's a lot of history here and this, restaurant over here one second let me get over here oldie hansa uh, apparently it's a restaurant where you could have a real sort of medieval experience dining experience and um when i think of that i think of like vikings having a whole hog and um <laughs> hearty grog <laughs> that, that sort of thing yeah look at all the christmas lights in the distance beautiful and um there's a plane flying overhead Awesome, I love like the sort of triangular tops of buildings. Very Tallinn, you know, including the place I'm staying over there. Now it is a weekday, so all these kids going to school wrapped up warm, I don't envy them, that's for sure. <laughs> and you've got this artwork there on the wall, street art. We're going somewhere a bit later with some street art. You might know I was in Mexico recently and of course there in magic towns, little towns, there are a lot of colourful buildings. But the buildings here are different in terms of the colours. They're more like sort of pastel colours, like pale yellows and turquoise. And this is like the main square where we were at the beginning with the Christmas market. We're going there later after dark to have some glurgy. More on that later. And let's look at the uh, sun as it comes up, hitting the buildings. This is something I really wanted to see. It's the Alexander Nevsky Church. It's a Russian Orthodox church. I think dating back to the early 1900s. And you might know I'm a bit of an architecture geek, especially when it comes to religious buildings. And Orthodox churches generally have like a gold dome on the top. But this one has black domes. Never seen anything like it. Looks very Russian. Yeah, it looks like out of Red Square in Moscow. Not that I've been there. Yeah, it's beautiful. So I believe Tallinn, as well as being a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it was once like a walled city. So you can see like the wall and the tower things all around the outside. And you can see it in real life as well, to the left of me. And there is of course a lot more to do in Tallinn than just the old town. Um, but obviously I have to show you that first because that's the name of it. But we're kind of, where are we? We're over there somewhere. We're heading to a place over there next. We're also going all the way over there. So you're getting a bit of a tour of Tallinn today. This is a stunning church. Look at it. I'm blown away. The black is so unique. Okay, I think the church is open, so let's put the mask on and let's go inside. So 
something's really nice in there. I think it's my first Russian Orthodox church I've been into. You can't film, can't take photos, but I did manage to get some sneaky shots from the doorway. I did get told off for filming as well. <laughs> YouTube life. But um, yeah, it's very grand, very impressive. Lots of gold, lots of stained glass, candles, as you would expect. And, and I thought something that I haven't seen before was like the, the pillars had like a red and blue and white thing all the way down the side. Kind of like a barber shop, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, my first Russian Orthodox church, I believe. Anyway, we're now going to a Bohemian area. We're going to check out some trams. Let's go. Okay, I've headed out of the old town through residential areas, train tracks, you name it, and arrived at Teleskivi. Apologies if you're Estonian. My Estonian level is basically nothing. Um, and it's like a bohemian creative city hipster kind of area with a lot of street art love a bit of street art oh what's this it's, i think it's some shops and we've got this big teleskivi 42 thing on the wall loving the street art some more over in that direction that's interesting it looks like a cat of some kind and made out of all sorts of different materials like pipes and the eyes are made out of i don't know some sort of fan maybe i don't know with leaves everywhere look at it <laughs> look at the street art that's amazing it reminds me of montreal um boulevard saint laurent in montreal very similar in terms of the kind of eclectic bohemian style the children's playground some weird sort of dome thing over there sleigh bells ring diamonds bling carols sing famous season sleigh bells ring diamonds bling carols sing famous season they said say nick but you gotta be in that bag yeah i got a rax rax in my sack or in my bag yeah oh what's this place death food it's like, uh, I think, like a restaurant street food kebab area. There's Az Azerbaijan, um, is that like shashlik, like a uh, barbecue thing? And it's like um, shipping containers. It reminds me of a place in London, uh, Box Park in Shoreditch. There's even like a place here, restaurant in old train cars. Wow. Wow, look, look inside there. I imagine this would be great to come to in the summer, you know, this, I'm, I'm sure this area would be quite sort of vibrant and eclectic in the summer. People drinking out on the streets, street food, that sort of thing. You know what, I'm going to have to come back to Tallinn in the summer because this place is awesome. Right, I'm back in the old town, I'm back by the Alexander Nevsky Church. I'm in the Danish garden. What are these bizarre figures here? They look rather gloomy, like grim reapers kind of thing with no face, like looming over me. Bizarre, bizarre. And over here, there's another one and there's Jim Morrison behind it on the wall. I think it's Jim Morrison. That's a bit of a Paris throwback. I went to his grave in Paris. Yeah, look at that crazy that thing and there's Jim Morrison and there's Tallinn lovely blue skies okay I have to be honest with you I'm going home for a little bit to regenerate my extremities because everything is gonna fall off and I mean everything if you know what I mean um yeah just look at this so peaceful in Tallinn Gorgeous. Loving it. And we've got Christmas trees everywhere. What are you doing for Christmas? Let me know down in the comments. I'll be in Poland. Right, this is where I'm staying. This medieval place. It's like a courtyard sort of thing. Cobbly floor, cobbly ground even. You know what I mean. And I've picked up my hat while I was there. I know it does me no favours, but at this point, I'm ready to die from cold. Um, there's somewhere I want to go to, actually, uh, before we go to the Christmas market, that I read about on Atlas Obscura. It's a website that I would absolutely recommend if you want to find places that are a bit obscure and off the beaten track. Not an ad, not a spawn. I just bloody love it. So let's get going.
Right on the way there, I thought I would warm up a little bit with a nice coffee. Um, yeah, I don't do hot drinks. Mm. Look at a nice big glass. Caramel on the top, lovely. And I've also got a salmon and broccoli quiche. It's about three euros, I think. Not too bad. Lovely, nice bit of salad. Mm, love a bit of quiche, I do. Um, I'm not really keen on broccoli, but you know what, we'll give it a go. Love salmon in a quiche. Ooh, look at that. Look at the salmon. Yeah, cheesy, eggy. You can't go wrong with a quiche. Mm. Stunning. Salmon, cheese, egg, broccoli. Awesome. Creamy, fishy. The salmon is really strong, actually. Love it. Mm. Okay, waiting by the side of the road to see some trams. They're red and white, and I understand transport, public transport is free in Tallinn, although I have read that you do have to pay for it. I think for tourists it's not free. Let me know in the comments if you know. Um, I think there's certain criteria that you have to meet in order to benefit from the free public transport, but that's great. Public transport free in a city is very progressive, I think. Right, we're almost there at the obscure spot. And um, I've got to say, the thing about a country like Estonia and a city like Tallinn, the quality of the food is divine. There are some other things I wanted to try. There's like a sprat thing on, on rye bread, like little fish. Um, you never know, we might have that tomorrow on my last day. But um, yeah, I, I really feel like at home going to like little cafes like that, having a quiche and a nice coffee. Beautiful, right, it's up there. Right, if you know me well, by now you should know that as well as being fascinated by trams, I'm also fascinated by a slightly bizarre, concrete, brutalist kind of abandoned architecture. And up these steps is one of them. Okay, we got graffiti. That's one thing now that this place has kind of become known for, is its plethora of graffiti. I think graffiti is just as much as important as something like street art because it's it shows the character of oh my god of the city wowzers this is so cool what is it let me tell you it's um Lina hall it's a concert hall that was built for the moscow olympics in 1980. it seats 5,000 people or at least it did and i believe it was in use up until like 20 years ago and apparently there are sometimes still things that happen here but as you can see now it's largely deserted and abandoned you've got these almost monolithic staircases with the graffiti around the top um, as you can see there are fences there i read yesterday that since 2019 you can't actually get inside i'll try and put some photos over the top that i found but you can only go up on the roof now. Right, let's do a running along the ground shot before rising up to the graffiti. You know, this is like typical Soviet communist architecture. <laughs> These gray, concrete, rectangular, very sort of, um, in a lot of ways, boring, a lot of people would say, but I find it quite fascinating. It's a, it's a very important remnant of the past graffiti artists heaven up here and we can get a great view now of the sea that's the north of Tallinn so Helsinki is up that way Stockholm somewhere over there I guess and St. P would be in sort of that direction over there and down the other side is a helipad how exciting is this can we get to the helipad let's see if we can Oh, you can tell I'm probably, you can probably tell I'm a bit excited right now. <laughs> you can tell that in my voice. I love this sort of exploration, you know, climbing around dilapidated old buildings. Okay, scrap that thought. We can't because there's a fence. You can go down that way, but it doesn't go anywhere. It just goes down to the sea. Yeah, just imagine like in the 80s, early 80s, 1980 Olympics. You know, all famous people, I guess, and sportsmen arriving for events at this concert hall. And now it's this derelict, forgotten place, crumbling 
and falling apart. And I, I read that, you know, as a, the reason for the fact that it's crumbling, crumbling and falling apart is because of basically cheap construction in Soviet times. Um, but it's still standing. Okay, I've snuck through the side of that fence there. Let's have a look down here. It's definitely all fenced off and everything. There's a car park underneath, I think. Maybe I can get into the car park, but yeah, clearly I can't get in because yeah, it's all boarded up. So, beautiful Tallinn. Yeah, this might not be to everyone's taste, but you know what? It's to mine. And if you enjoy a bit of sort of abandoned, obscure areas, a bit of geeky history stuff, then it's for you. It's a bit like, you know, one of those computer games where you have to run around like an abandoned hellhole area and shoot people. Um, but it's, you know, recent history, 40 years, 40 years ago. Yeah, 1980, two years before I was born. Ah, this has been a highlight. Gaze upon the sky Christmas on my mind Somewhere from a place up high above There's a song of love Traveling afar Oh, Apple. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. So. so this is nice. How magical, you know, Christmas market at Christmas. I haven't been to a Christmas market since I think I was in Berlin about 12 years ago. But it's great to be in one, especially this year. You know, how many Christmas markets are happening? Well, Tallinn, they are. So this is glug, and I can already smell it. Or should I say gluggy? Right, let's go into it in a second. Let me taste it first. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Oh my god. It's hot. You know, first of all, um, just feeling the heat on your hands is mind-blowing <laughs> after today. And so Glugi, so that's the Estonian name. It comes from the Sweden Swedish name Glug. Now, you might think it's Glogi or Glogi, but no, it's got an umlaut on it, a bit like in German and Swedish, so it's Glugi. Um, I hope I did that right. And um, yeah, it's basically like um, glue vine. Uh, that you find at uh, uh, Weinachsmarkt in Germany or mulled wine. I don't normally like hot drinks, as I said before, but you know what? After today, this is the best. And it's, it's made with, um, you know, like mulled wine is, cinnamon, spices and alcohol, that sort of thing. Um, mm. oh, it's really nice, really fruity. I love it. It's warming my cockles. <laughs> and apparently this comes from um, early 16th century in Sweden when um, postmen used to drink it in the morning to warm up before they delivered their shopping shopping post mm. I've had it years ago mulled wine but I, I've never been a big fan of it perhaps it's different with um, you know a Scandinavian feel I did watch a video yesterday a guy saying that yeah it's like mulled wine but it's better he was correct bottoms up mm. And there are plenty of other varieties as well of gluggy. There's non-alcoholic, cocoa, coffee, hot wine, cherry, you name it. And that one was 350 that I had, so I think that price seems to be pretty standard. And um, you've also got, you know, other things that you would always find at Christmas markets, you know, little stockings. Are they gingerbread men? I don't know. Um, Christmas ornaments, things for the tree up there. And look at these baubles. Aren't they cute? I'm stuck suddenly feeling Christmassy. <laughs> right, I've also got a Bailey's truffle to go with my, my gluggy from that little place behind me. They also do like little pancakes, which are really cute. Lots of different other truffles as well. Um, and this is a Bailey's one. Did I say it was Bailey's? And it's like rock hard. I normally expect truffles to be quite soft, but who cares? Mmm. <laughs> oh my God. Truffles are life. That is stunning. It's like a proper truffle, you know, not the crap you get from a supermarket. Mm. Oh my god. 
it's beautiful. Right, I'm almost home, and a woman just gave me some coin outside that oldie Hansa restaurant from earlier, that's what it was called, for something free, I don't know. But anyway, um, can I just say, I've thoroughly enjoyed filming this video, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I think it's one of my favourites of the year, to be honest, and uh, I wanted to say about Tallinn, you know, it was somewhere that I wasn't planning on coming, you know, my trip to the Baltics was just being based in Riga. One of my English students actually said, he was from St. Petersburg, he said, why don't you go to Tallinn, why not? You know, so I thought, yeah, why not? You only live once, and it kind of sums up the story of this year for me, in that, obviously because of COVID, so many things have been cancelled for everyone, and for me as well. As a result, I've had to kind of think on the fly, if you know what I mean, and come up with places to go to that weren't originally planned. And actually, those places that haven't been planned have been the best of the year. Orid, Toluca, places like that. And Tallinn has joined that. I've loved it, um, even though it's only been one day. You know, if you have been to Tallinn before, why not put down in the comments any places that you went to help other viewers out? That will save them researching when they come. And overall, I would wholeheartedly recommend Tallinn. It's beautiful, so much to do, um, as well as Riga, as I said when I was there. So that brings us the Baltic series to a close. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed being in the Baltics. And um, next up, we are going to be going to Krakow in Poland, back to the motherland. Yes, I'm half Polish and we'll be there for Christmas. So I'll see you next time on Christmas day. Have a wonderful Christmas if you're celebrating and I'll see you next time. Catch you later. Oh.